There's recently been a major update to the Minotaur firmware and to the accompanying free Minotaur editor, which fully unleashes all of these additional abilities and greatly extends the sonic palette of the Minotaur itself. It's gone from a bass synthesizer, which always sounds amazing, to a really much more versatile baritone lead instrument with a lot of cool new sounds that it can make. A lot of these cool new sounds are provided by the enhanced modulation and oscillator section. In version 2.2, the LFO now has five different wave shapes that it can create, and additionally you can use the filter envelope as a modulation source. Modulation goes to the oscillators and to the filter, and in the oscillator section you now have the ability to modulate only oscillator 2 separate from oscillator 1. And that's useful for creating interval sounds, for creating cool special effects and sweeps, but it's especially useful because, also new in this recent update, Oscillator 2 now has hard sync, which allows you to create a really distinctive class of analog oscillator sounds. And you can hear that especially when the frequency of Oscillator 2 is being swept like this. So here are a few quick sounds to demonstrate some of the new LFO waveforms and modulation capabilities. Here's a sample and hold waveform modulating a hard synced oscillator. And here's the filter envelope sweeping hard synced oscillator too. Here we have sample and hold controlling the filter, which is a totally classic analog synth sound. This preset shows off the ability to modulate oscillator 2 only without using hard sync, which lets you create modulated pitch intervals. You've got something that goes from unison to, say, a fourth or a fifth interval, and you can get some really cool musical effects that way. And finally, here's a sound that uses a sawtooth LFO to create a nice video game space zap kind of sound effect that sounds great when you crank the LFO rate. So the Minotaur editor makes editing sounds extremely easy, and it's equally easy to save them. You can save presets on your computer and manage as many of them as you like, and they're easily navigable here. They can be searched, they can be sorted into different folders for different projects, and from the preset librarian, you can also mix and match and create custom sound banks that are saved on the Minotaur itself. The Minotaur hardware can hold up to 128 presets in its memory, which can all be viewed and organized and managed here in the editor. There's also a settings interface here, which lets you control the Minotaur's global settings, which controls sort of overall behavior of the instrument. And as well, you can set up polychaining here, which allows you to mix and match and chain up to 16 synthesizers together for polyphonic sounds. Additionally, you can control the Minotaur's CV mapping from this page, which allows you to take the control voltage or expression pedal input jacks on the back of the instrument and map them to virtually any parameter of the sound. And additionally, any mapped parameters like that will send out MIDI information, so you can use the Minotaur as a three-channel control voltage to MIDI converter, which is a pretty neat additional trick. The editor exists in a standalone format that you can use for sound design and library work, and additionally, it's available as a plugin in all the major formats, audio units, AAX, or VST. And when you use the editor as a plugin in your audio software, you have all the same abilities to edit and automate parameters that you would have for any plugin or software synthesizer. 
with the wonderful sound quality that you get from the Minotaur hardware. So it really is the best of both worlds, and the editor makes it extremely easy to unlock it and use all of that potential.